So everybody's been asking about monitor videos and obviously monitors, uh, water monitors, Verena Salvatore, one of the most important projects that I breed at Nerd. And I have a, such an affinity for these guys. Uh, it's probably one of the most challenging but rewarding species of reptile that I actually work with. Obviously I love snakes, but uh, lizards are just fantastic because we can get nifty paint jobs, but we also get this brain that is likened to that of a bird or a mammal. So uh, what we do here besides breed a variety of different uh, color variants and pattern variants of Miranda Salvatore, we also socialize animals. I also do it even with dwarf caiman. But uh, when you socialize an animal, basically you're conditioning the animal to trust you and you reaffirm to that animal that you can be trusted and you're not there to hurt it. And as you start interacting with the animal, the animal starts giving you more of themselves. And you start getting the animal as it really is, not being fearful, not being trying to always find a way to get away from you. You get this wonderfully tractable, friendly animal. And that's what we do. So we're now at the point where we're about, we're coming up to five generations in that are five generations removed from the wild. So I took my initial wild stock in the 1990s and I bred them so many times, successful generations, we're now pretty much at the fifth generations. So it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Here I'm looking, this is a, a very nice uh, T negative albino water monitor. Wonderful, sweet animal. There's two types of uh, T negatives. There's a type one T negative and a type two. Uh, so one is gonna be very much like an uh, albino ball python as a baby. Other one be a little less severe looking, but as they grow, they all pretty much equalize, even uh, T positives, which are tyrosinase positive, meaning that the switch for melanin is, is on a little bit. So there is some melanin production and it gives it a T positive caramel albino look. This is the switch completely off. So this is uh, essentially a beautiful, this would be you know, equivalent to an albino ball python, albino Burmese python, a T negative albino. Uh, no melanin, so the control for melanin production is basically uh, shut off. So since we use mulch on a lot of these guys' cages, this is a, a white monitor and uh, white albino. So you're going to get all this staining from the, the mulch. And so this animal would normally be uniquely white. And uh, this is just a fantastic animal. Uh, but this is so much what we aspire to have. This animal that looks so crazy and so wonderful. But look at the brain on this. This animal is just uh, so wonderful. The, I'm reading so much behavior coming from this animal as, as it's doing things with its tongue, how it licks the side of its mouth. This is an animal that's very, everything is good. Everything is, is uh, fine, uh, very interactive, very reasonable, wants to uh, enjoy uh, the socialization. And um, I do some videos on socialization of monitors and talk about building a, threads of trust. These animals come out of the eggs and they, they want generally want to bite you. They're at the bottom of the food chain. So everything wants to uh, eat them and attack them. Could be a fish, could be a wading bird, could be another monitor. So they're naturally, instinctually uh, designed to be fearful, non-trusting, run. Whenever possible, run, bite, thrash, anything they can. So uh, as we produce these and you affirm to them that you're a good thing, they learn to trust you. They learn to recognize you, they know you. What's really remarkable about water monitors is within seconds, they, they evaluate situations and they know what's going on. So this animal, if I was having a very comfortable experience, she's long tongue flicks, very curious, not this flinching. She's just, everything's good. But this animal could all of a sudden lock sight with another monitor that's bigger. So let's say I have like a big four foot water monitor and she sees that. I call everything she, just so you know. I'm not designating the sex of them. Uh, but it's, it will see that, it'll evaluate that as a sudden danger and they'll suddenly behave differently. Sometimes you watch little babies and they'll do this little jittering motion. That King Cobra I was playing with earlier was doing the same kind of jittering motion 
And this is almost like the animal becomes acutely aware that it is vulnerable, it's exposed, it's in a potential uh, environment where it's not comfortable and uh, it could be, you know, food for something. But uh, highly intelligent animals. To actually call these guys genius would be uh, a reasonable statement. Uh, no biting, I never have any worries. Like, once I make friends with these guys, biting is just not, it's not even on the, um, the worry. Their, uh, their claws, I didn't trim anybody's claws here, but usually trimming claws in an animal like this, you wanna trim the claw. One note, so the outside edge of the claw grows faster than the underside. And what that does is it causes a curve. So it's always forever sharpening itself. So you trim their claws within a week or so, you're like noticing a whole new needle point. You have to keep on trimming them with a cat or dog clippers. They're largely aquatic but they're also largely arboreal. So they're gonna climb up any kind of trees. Uh, they'll go out on branches. They're gonna basically invade every type of habitat. And even in the wild, they're even gonna invade into uh, salted areas. So normally an animal like this is gonna to need to live in fresh water, but they can also tolerate uh, salted environments to a certain degree. I guess their uh, kidneys are able to get out some of the salts. Uh, I'm not saying that you could like, you know, give this thing salt water, but very tolerant, which basically nature has designed them to be uh, uh, true opportunistics of different environments. And these guys are active foragers, so they actively are hunting for everything. So this is uh, basically Vivitatis. So Vivitatis, you can notice they have the shoulder banding across. Macromaculata generally have the smaller ocelli. I'll show you some really nice macros in a minute. But this is, uh, this is an imported animal and uh, he's wonderful. We've, we've actually started, just just started to make some uh, azantics in captivity. And uh, they're really fantastic if you look at the color. Hi, buddy. He's a very shy little guy. Hi. Once again, I flow with it. Everything is flow. Everything is flow. I'm not worried about getting bit. I'm worried about scratches. So, and you notice I keep going under whenever possible. I try to go under support kind of flow with them i'm not doing a lot of overhanded and uh, i'll stick my hand right in his face and they're not biting me but there's really uh socializing these guys and dealing with them there is a magic to it and it's very uh you can't just it's just not as simple as mechanics it's understanding and not pushing them too far because an animal like this once you push it too far you uh, sometimes do or you will do a lot of damage as far as your uh, relationship with the animal and then you have to go and catch up. So you could literally have one episode and you're like, oh my God, I've just lost weeks of what I'm going to accomplish with this animal. So the thing with this guy right now, he, he's, he's decent, but you know, he's being brought out into a different room. There's a lot of things going on. All he wants to do is get away and jam himself into a little corner. They're fearful of big open spaces. So he just wants to hide, come out, be kind of cryptic. And even those animals can be big, they often don't utilize a lot of the space in their cages because they have their own ideas, where they want to bask, where they want to soak. And a lot of times they like a tighter confinement. As long as you're meeting the basic husbandry, uh, it makes them feel better. So an animal like this, which I love so much, is remarkable to me because she's from the wild she was probably you know she was caught by somebody sadly thousands and thousands and thousands of these are harvested annually for skins and they are butchered quite effectively and quite fast they also eat these guys so uh i was very lucky to get you alive and i think maybe you were very lucky are but they worth more dead than alive well, they're easier to manage. So yeah, they're worth more dead because you can have so many. When you have a live animal now, you have to feed it, you have to water it, you have to potentially get bitten by it. But what's so great about her, I can do all this stuff, right? No ill will. And the only reason why I can do this, that this predator is allowing me to interact with it is because it has a brain, highly intelligent. It has now learned, hey, you're not gonna hurt me. Um, you're part of my life. And you want to basically have a very uh, nice freedom with an animal like this. You want to flow with this animal. But most important, the animal must trust you. So you must 
go and look at some of my previous videos on how to socialize reptiles, particularly monitors. I might have videos like Monitors 101. This is when I was doing all these bubblegum videos before I brought on Donnie, and he was giving us far more polished videos, and we're trying to be more concise. Uh, sadly, when I do those kind of videos, it takes us longer. So please pour over the older videos and uh, hopefully you're subscribing to our videos and you're gaining some uh, information from all of our care videos and just uh, looking into the minds of these guys because I want you to have a better relationship with your animals. The more success that you have in realizing the potential of these animals through my eyes and the more I show you the more it gets you to think, you then therefore will go and show more people. So it's exponential and that's really what I'm out to do is get people to uh, consider reptiles in a different light. But that's a beautiful animal and she's a future breeder. I introduced Kevin to a new YouTube channel that he's kind of kind of likes Clint's reptiles. I like Clint's. Clint, excellent. I He's a nerd like you. I like it. Clint, I was really enjoying just I like his information and he knows what he's talking about and he has a very uh, modest approach. There's another imported animal. This is from my buddy Andre. Hi, hi. So this is an animal that is uh, a bit more on the spooky side. Okay, so I'll just let him wiggle. But this is such a cool animal. This animal grows so slow. This animal took forever. Now he's starting to lose his mind. Hold on. Oh slow, no. Slow, slow, slow. Come back. Come here. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of like managing his his energy. Come on. You're not grabbing the tail. You're not no. quite putting pressure on him. No. So what I do is I basically just, I'm trying to absorb all that flailing and extra energy and try to get him to pause. So you just kind of give him a chance to reaffirm it, that it's, you know, it's not a bad situation. This, this animal has, I think this animal has been through a really hard time. I also think that it's in this animal's genetic makeup to be uh, very nervous and uh, could be locality. You know, we have sometimes, let's say if we're talking about reticulated pythons, sometimes there's mutations that are more nervous than others. All right, so now we're getting a chance to think. This is a, a new mutation that we're working on. Uh, ultimately, it's genetics. It's gonna probably end up being incomplete dominant. And uh, this little guy just needs to grow. So this is a male. I wanna point something out. There are some people that seem to think if I take a flashlight and I shine it on the uh, underside of this animal's tail, I can sex water monitors. That's not real? No, it's not real. If, if it was real like that, uh, we'd be doing it a long time ago. That is not real. So I've actually taken animals that I knew where the sex was, and then I tried doing it with a very high-powered flashlight in a dark room, and I'm looking for the blood vessels of the hemipenes. The thing with water monitors, they also, females have very sophisticated scent glands, and they will avert the scent glands that could look like hemipenes, so therefore they have a very large blood vessel that's attached to those scent glands. Uh, people then are misconstruing that, thinking the scent glands indeed are hemipenes too. I uh, sex water monitors by sight. I look at them, I study them, and I get a feel for it. I just want to make sure that's very clear. Uh, sexing water monitors when they're young is not an easy task. Yeah. I'm going to say hi to my buddy Danny Gorman. What's up, Danny? Make sure he watches our videos. We're going to find Danny out. Danny watches my videos. Yeah. He and his woman watch my videos. They drink their coffee and make fun of me. Same. Banana rare? Is this a it's big deal? The only deal? one. It's the only one? Only one that we know of. Here's a little black dragon. I mean, a little female. So I just sexed it. So that's a girl. So this is a uh, Colmany. So a bit smaller growing. So there are t a couple different types of black dragons. We have black dragons that are sourced from Sumatra. Sumatran black dragon can get very large. It can get as large as any of the other mainland black dragons. Then we have actually true Colmanys, which are smaller growing. So our girls are, you know, smaller. Uh, fantastic animals. So this is an incomplete. Uh, homozygous representation, so meaning that this is the full expression of the black dragon. So a heterozygous black dragon, which would be an uh, incomplete dominant heterozygous gene carrier for the black dragon, is um, more typical 
of what a uh, Salvatore, Veranda Salvatore would look like. Uh, it will be uh, just darker. It, looks, it has more melanin. But what this is, this is um, exaggerated melanin production. But really wonderful animal. Very calm animal. This, this animal is so confident. The way it's uh, doing stuff with its tongue, it was just doing right there, nice and easy. Then it will lick the side of its mouth. They're so good. So an animal like this really does enjoy uh, interaction, uh, getting pet. It's definitely getting, uh, once they're trusting of you and they calm down, they're like, wow, this kind of feels nice. So these guys are very, you know, there you go. See what it just looks the side of his mouth? I'm looking for that. That means everything is A-OK. -okay. That's a real good indicator. And once again, it's all about reading behaviors of these animals. And uh, I tend not to restrain my animals. I do a lot of open-handed stuff with my fingers. And some people might think, oh, that's a great way to get bit. How often have you ever seen me get bit, Donnie? Not often. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't attempt it because I'm scared, not unlike you. Well, you've dealt with a lot of monitors. Yes, I have. I haven't had any issues with your water monitors at all. When would you restrain a monitor, though? Well, if it's actually trying to bite or if it's trying to get away, because obviously a monitor that gets loose can be a problem for its own safety, yet alone, you know, getting outside, dying, getting into something. So basically, I try to work with the brain first. And even when I do restrain them, I try to do it in such a uh, nil way that it's the least amount of, um, I don't really want to, if I, if I do stuff, it's kind of like this. I generally don't like to grab monitors overhanded. Uh, if I can, I always want to control them on the underside. If it's a really, you know, like a super social animal that I'm really comfortable with, I might do some of this. But generally, if it's an animal that's kind of like on the edge, he's, he just saw, she just saw something that she's, she'll sit here, she was just watching that retic. And uh, so aware. I mean, their awareness is, is, is amazing. They're very much like a, I mean, it's literally a little dinosaur, it's a little bird. And you can get around that by uh, trimming things. But once I said, you know, put your hands over it. If you have an animal that's kind of nervous, this is very predatory. Underside. This, this is all good. This is how you, you basically bomb with these guys. They're very sensitive to the side of their face being rubbed. See that what it's making it do? Because I'm rubbing its ear. So I love birds and hand-fed birds. So understanding bird logic and uh, just this is, this, this animal's enjoying this immensely. Oh, look at that. They're like looking at all the snakes. This is so, so there's a snake right there. Yeah, they're looking at everything. They're looking at the guys right next to them. So, it, just amazingly, amazingly aware. She's like, should I be afraid of that? But you know what's interesting about these guys? They actually, if I do things to like touch them and hold them, they get security. Because I'm something well known to them and something that uh, basically instills further confidence. So you can take an animal that's a little bit scared and you can reel them in just by touch. Look at, look, look at this, this is the big long neck looking around, they're wow, they're just like completely geeked out. This is pretty interesting. So you see what they're doing. That is what they're looking at. Yeah, they're looking at that big guy. This, this retic right here. So they're basically evaluating. So they're all like, wow, oh, kind of scared. So this is where, so I take out a group like this, somebody walking behind me could be enough just to trigger them a little bit. So they're kind of doing this really like, they're posturing their body sideways, a lot of neck, completely out and a lot of like, they're not trying to draw attention to themselves, but they're very tentative in what they've seen. Now when they're in the cages, I open up the cages and they come piling out on me. And because they're like, yay, it's fun time because they're in their very comfort zone. This is not as comfortable to them. So right now they're kind of taking it in and uh, their little brains are, are going. And this is massive brain activity right here. These guys are taking it all in and I'm, I'm forever impressed and very proud of how wonderful these guys are. 
some baby T positives that are trying to figure out life. A little scared. So when I put them on this cover, there's all these little threads and then they get their little feet stuck in it. And it's almost like they're walking on Velcro. So I think that kind of scares them a little bit. So they're better just being in my hand. You think they'll get the confidence? Oh my soon? God, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're already working on it. See how much better they're as soon as I put them in my hand? Yeah. It's, I've never put them on this and I stupidly didn't even uh, anticipate that. All right, so these are uh, some macromaculatas. So see all the little dots on them? So this is like some of our babies that we sell. So we actually sell, you know, third, fourth generation uh, water monitors coming into fifth generation water monitors. And if somebody ever wonders why uh, our water monitors are easily 850 to $1,200, it's because you're getting multi-generation in, you're getting uh, socialized animals, you're getting, it's really such a difference between this and an imported animal. It's amazing because I want you to have, you know, a pet that becomes your buddy. I want you to have a positive experience. And there's a lot involved in getting this animal produced, yet alone socialized. And just getting a nice healthy animal like that is uh, key. So never ever go for the cheap investment of something like that because a lot of times you're gonna you're gonna be uh, troubled. Being able to socialize animals, I can generally socialize you know, some pretty gnarly animals and make them uh, tractable and trusting, it's essentially friendly. So I was getting a lot of grief, but it's amazing is sometimes um, jealousy or not understanding somebody, you're gonna be the first to criticize them uh, and trying to basically equate your abilities or what you do with what they do. And um, I guess that's just what people on the sidelines like to do. Whatever, I don't really care, have fun. If you at least can understand what I'm talking about and you realize we're all on the same team, that's key. All right, so hopefully people enjoyed this first uh, monitor video we've done for a while. Make sure, please, you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You're obviously seeing it. Make sure you hit that notification bell. I wanna see comments. Tell us what you like. Keep talking, we are reading your comments. Don't forget, I generally glean over the first uh, few days of comments to try to you know see what you guys are saying uh, I am very busy it's very hard to message people back and everything like that always some I, I, I'm capable of doing uh, also follow us on New England Reptile on Facebook certainly on Instagram New England Reptile uh, evil morph God on Instagram that's my personal and uh, also visit New England Reptile store to get some of our reptiles because we have lots oh goodness gracious Lots of reptiles there for sale. And uh, generally when we do sell little water monitors, we like to talk to you. We'll go into our babies and try to tailor uh, the proper fit for you. We like to do little videos of them. So just because you don't see it on the website, please ask us. We have all sorts of water monitors for sale. And uh, they're not coffee mugs to us. So you know our sales are pretty unique and we want you to have a really good experience and we're not just trying to blow them out the door, so we just want to find the right people because there's never enough monitors to satisfy my demand.